just absolutely pleased and privileged to be here with you this afternoon. I'm going to kind of jump right in and um, talk to you about my kids because um, what I do is, is really not significant. It's about what my kids do that is amazing. Um, these are some of my kids. Uh, I'm at a middle school in Ocoee. It's, it's a little tiny suburb of Orlando at the very west end, quite near Disney. And I've got a really big, big campus with lots and lots of squirming middle schoolers. Uh, I want you to see some of these numbers. And I know ordinarily in a, in a big idea fest like this, you know, numbers aren't supposed to be um, what we talk about. But the numbers are, are what drives me, and especially these numbers. Like I said, over 1,600 kids, 650 of those cannot read at grade level. But this is the big number right here. 20 of those children, only 20, have a reason that is intellectual that, that they're not reading on grade level. Um, I'm a relatively new principal, so that was one of the first pieces of data I found when I, when I got there. Um, and it really just opened my eyes. It was huge to me that really there isn't a reason why they're not reading. There isn't a reason why I have 650 middle schoolers that still are not reading at a fourth grade level or a third grade level. Um, other than the fact that we've turned them off, we have lost them. We have done this to them, and we have to undo it. And this doesn't count the kids on the other end. Now, this counts kids that are in those struggling reading classes. This doesn't count the kids that we've lost who are reading on grade level. This doesn't count this beautiful young man who is mine and near and dear to my heart, who's got 150 IQ and came home one day last year and told me he got dumber today after he went to school. Just as you can imagine, I do what I do that is heartbreaking to me to hear a teenager talk like that. Um, so basically, in other words, it's our fault. We are the reason that they are not learning. We are the reason they're not engaged. But the good news is we can fix it, right? So the disconnect is that what we're doing is not connecting to our kids. I mean, absolutely not connecting to our kids. This is David again. And I think you can see he's kind of got his Xbox, you know, clicker in his hand there. He's got his iPod going. There's his, you know. But mom, I am doing my homework. And if you listen, you know, uh, like any good parent does, and you eavesdrop, because uh, that's really the only way you get the truth out of them. You, you know, as I stand at the door of his game room, I can hear him because, you know, they die off and then their little team is waiting to get formed again and, re, you know, whatever they're doing in that world that I can't participate in. Um, they're talking. Uh, and they're talking about their vocabulary and what their AP teacher is going to put on the exam and how they think he's going to trick them and da 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 so they really are doing their homework while they're playing Xbox. Um, so I don't fight that battle anymore, and I, I beg you not to either. What it did show me, though, is that we don't do things like they do things, and we have to be OK with that. This is a, a group of my kids on a field trip. Uh, this amazing live screen, I don't know if you can tell by the scale of it how tall. You know, these kids are. The tall one in the front there is over six foot tall, so you can imagine the size of this screen. This is at Full Sail University, and it's an amazing facility um, not too far away from me in Orlando. And when I went to that university, I drank the Kool-Aid is what I call it. Um, and right then, I decided that was the answer. It is a phenomenal digital university that connects to kids, kids meaning, uh, you know, um, 20 and 30 year olds that are going to college. Um, and to me, that was the answer about what we need to do to engage our students. Again, I guess we need to just ask them. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to pop into my middle school and talk to a few of my kids. So here they are. Hey, Ms. Hey, good morning, guys. Good How are you? See you too. All right. <laughs> so tell us sure, what you're doing. I'd be happy to. Actually, I'm on the Moodle site right now. Up top here is actually our Moodle banner that one of our students created. Pretty cool. Now I'm going to show you our yearbook cover designs. These are the two finalists. And the class vote, this one won. Now, I'm going to go show you some designs from this year and last year's digital art program. Here in the left is actually our IRE post out to, that we made to celebrate reading. 
Over here is actually last year's yearbook cover design. Also, here is our is this year's student plan that one of our students created. And lastly, this is the Shark Team Area T-shirt design. Now, I'm going to go show you a commercial that we made this year in the digital art program. And you can play on computers. Get it? Play on computer. <laughs> Look, I'm blind to the air. If you come before school, you can't do this, but you could do this. And what about gaming? I understand we have gaming on yeah, our campus. Yeah, we have a great gaming program. <laughs> Can you show us? Sure, we'd love to. We'll be there in a flash. Hey, Miss Gabriel. Hi, this is our gaming program. This is one of our students, Erin. She's going to show us her game. So to play, you move around with the arrow keys and jump, and you, whenever you get to an enemy, you use the space bar and try to kill him. And what's the purpose of the game? To get to the end and like save the person. To save a person, got it. Thanks, Aaron, for Thanks. showing us your game. Now let's go back to the digital art room. All right, so that looks kind of hard. So what were you doing there? Well, we combined several technological skills with collaborative group work and a little reading and math in most of our projects. Thank you very much for letting us see what you were doing today. You're welcome. It's been great talking to you. Have a great day. <laughs> OK, so what you can't tell from that clip is that some of those kids, uh, the blonde little girl, Erin, is painfully, painfully shy. Um, is not one of those kids that gets involved in everything, um, but she has just taken off in gaming. And you can't tell it from that little clip there, but she is just phenomenal and at a quality of creating a gaming that is, is just amazing. Those other three young men, um, and uh, due to co time constraints, I wasn't able to show you all of the things they create. But the one young man with the really shaved hair that was kind of talking and walking um, last year was on the ver verge of expulsion. Um, really have had to do a lot of things that were unique and different to reach him. But he is now a leader. Um, I told them where I was coming and what I wanted to do. And I said, I kind of want to interact with you while I'm on the stage. And, that was what they produced. They wrote a little script for me that clearly I blew, but <laughs> not their fault. Um, but our kids are amazing. These are middle schoolers. Um, you know, I do want to kind of pull back a little bit and talk about research. Um, it's, it's really clear that kids don't work for us because they, they like us. And that's a lot of times people think that, oh, it's the cool teacher, oh, it's a, what makes the difference, and I've heard many of you talk about that all morning long, about that relationship piece, is they work for us when they think we like them. They work for us when they believe we respect them. When we connect to them is when they will come alive for us. Um, you know, we really do have to create that emotional connection. I, I'm preaching to the choir here. You're here because you get that. You're here because you do know we have a problem and you want to help solve it. Um, but we really do have to show them we care. We have to show them that we think that they're significant and meaningful. I do want to tell you um, that as we're going through this process, so please, please, please keep in mind that when questions come, and, and you know, I heard it this morning when we were doing our interview, that sometimes teachers aren't as respected as they should be, and people don't necessarily think that we're doing all we should do, and they're concerned about our ranking in the, uh, across the world. But when the questions come, please, please, please remember that no matter what, we answer to the children in the seats. It's, we don't answer to a score. We don't answer to a politician. We don't answer to a number. We answer to those children in the seats. And if we thought about that, first and foremost, every time we made a decision, then maybe we wouldn't find ourselves in the crisis where we're at now, where education is truly, truly in trouble. Um, 
you know, we talked about the little title of my, my talk here being uh, literacy, you know, the literacy crisis. But truthfully, engagement is the answer to all of it. It's really not just about literacy. It's about all of it. Um, we are their voice. We are the ones that have the power to change us. So I just, I just want to reach out to you today to ask you to, to do what you're doing in every, any way and in every way you can to help us solve this problem because we really are their voice. I mean, and I, I just implore that you do whatever it takes. Don't take no for an answer. I tell my teachers all the time, make me tell you no. And the answer to how is yes. Just don't say no. Just don't say no. Find whatever part you can do to impact education and, and do that. Um, I do have a couple of lo little snippets that I want to share with you. Um, this last piece. I'm a gaming lady. 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 Up in gaming, making our game, sparking creativity. Just got done making our game, can't believe he gave us a B. We love this class, we had lots of fun, can't believe it's gonna be time. Cause we had our turn, and now you're gonna learn what it really feels like to be a gaming. Cause if you like it, then you shouldn't press Q on it. If you like it, then you shouldn't press Q on it. So don't be mad at what you got, we gotta be on it. Cause if you like it, then you shouldn't press Q on it. Whoa, oh, 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 I don't know if that tune rings a bell to you, but. Um, these, these were some girls that created a, a game already, and they had a day left before the semester ended, and so they were just kind of messing around. And they just whipped up that little tune. Uh, that's what happens when kids are engaged. They continue on the process. They just continue to, to do whatever they can do. Um, one of the things that, that I think that brought me here was that I, I try to look and find ways to connect to kids, and I'm going to show you just a only a few minutes of a music video that we created on my campus last year. Um, and maybe it'll just kind of give you a little bit of inspiration. Every time I watch it, I get chills when I see what my kids. <laughs> so thank you very much. Keep reading Cause this book's gonna be a good book Cause this book's gonna be a good book Cause this book's gonna be a good, good book to read Cause this book's gonna be a good book Cause this book's gonna be a good book Cause this book's gonna be a good, good book Look, oh, 
It's an adventure. Woo! So keep on reading that book.